online video games here and I've been meaning to make this video for a while now recently I did a commentary review about what I thought about the King's Hateful Truce episode of the games WWE 12 and um, Need for Speed The Run and Need for Speed The Run was episode 59 of the Hateful Truce WWE 12 was episode 60 of the Hateful Truce. Now, I plan on doing this video prior to DSP releasing episode 61, and I assume that he would review episode 61, which would consist of Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword for the Nintendo Wii. The reason I foreshadowed in the past that his next episode of the Hateful Truce, part of this episode being released, would review the new Zelda game is because he usually reviews games for his Hateful Truths episodes that have a plethora of problems and Zelda is no exception. In addition to reviewing games that have a plethora of problems in the Hateful Truths episodes, he also reviews games that he spends a significant amount of time playing and usually beats the campaign mode of the games he reviews in his Hateful Truths episodes. I say usually because usually is a assumption that I make based off the episodes that I have seen. I do not think that I've watched every single Hateful Truths episode, but for the ones I've seen, he reviews games that have a plus or problems and that he spends a massive amount of time playing and he usually makes a campaign mode of those games. So, um, I originally saw that the King would give Skyward Sword a very low rating and I was surprised to find out after watching his um The Hateful Truth episode 61 that he gave Zelda a much higher rating than I expected. I do not have the game but from what I've heard and what I've seen I can let you know what I feel about the game and what I think about DSP's opinion about the game. So basically what DSP was saying was there are issues with Legend of Zelda and one issue is the motion controls and because the motion controls are very I guess you could say inaccurate it makes it difficult to I guess you could say do specific actions because if you want to shake the weird, if you want your um, character to, let's just say, put an item on the ground and you shake the weird remote down, he may throw it up. So that's just a hypothetical. It was very inaccurate. And even though this game can use a Wii Motion Plus controller, it may only be it would be played with a Wii Motion Plus controller. I'm not sure about that. I think it could be played with either the Wii Remote or the Wii Motion Plus controller. But either way, is um, the controls of this game are extremely inaccurate. And that's a huge issue, though, because now it's not based off, in addition to being based off perfect timing, like when do I attack, when do I dodge, where do I go, in addition to being based off scale with perfect time about when to attack, when to dodge, where to go when the boss is attacking you. It's not based off, I want to attack and damage a boss before he, I want to defeat the boss before he kills me so I don't die. And um, I'm not going to be able to do that because I can't control my character because the, the controls are inaccurate. So the motion controls are a huge issue and they could have easily implemented a GameCube controller and it allowed backwards compatibility like they do for the games Mario Kart Wii, Dragon Ball League, Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and that would have taken probably just minutes or seconds to implement or even on PC games they allow you to use a controller and you can even customize the buttons for yourself but unfortunately they force you to use a Wii mode and because of that I, I'm assuming if they let you use a game controller they would have had a lot more sales, but they probably lost a huge amount of potential customers because the game does not allow you to use a standard controller that doesn't force you to use motion controls. So DSP had an issue with the motion controls, and he was basically saying that um, 
most of the time that they work on their hand some of the time that they are very frustrating to implement though because they are frustrating to um use when you're trying to I guess you could say implement a specific action for your character so something that works 70% of the time but doesn't work 30% of the time and it doesn't feel normal and it's not what you're used to it doesn't work I mean if something has problems and it doesn't work so the Wii remote control doesn't work so you're gonna have, you're gonna probably struggle to control your character so that's a huge issue and if you can't control your character you're not gonna be able to progress in the game especially in a game that requires um, you to implement specific actions in order to defeat bosses and in order to progress and another issue DSP had was there was no um with this game was there was no um swift travel and a game in 2011 we love the idea of swift travel, at least I do, because if I want to get to one city or another location in a game, I don't want to spend hours on a horse or hours viewing my character on a horse. I just want to get to that location and move on, and you're usually in a loading screen, and being being forced to um not have that option and spending hours traveling on a horse or traveling on a, in the sky in some type of um mount is, um I guess you could say, I guess the king would probably use the word frustrating, so I guess you could say that's frustrating as well because you're just wasting time. I mean, when you play a game, you want action adventure. You don't want to just be flying in the sky with boring gameplay for 10 hours. The king saw that the graphics, in terms of important um, aspects of the game, were well implemented, so the graphics for combat and the graphics for bosses and monsters were great. On the other hand, the graphics in the background may have been three pixels and may have looked completely different than the graphics that you may see up close. So the background graphics are obviously not as, I guess you could say, visually appealing as a character, as the graphics on the character models. So. The graphics had issues, plus they were not in HD. So, alrighty, we have ter let's review real quick. We have horrendous controls, terrible graphics that are inconsistent, and that are not in HD. So, the gameplay saves the game, right? Even though we can't control our character, and it looks hideous compared to an HD game, and even a standard definition game, it doesn't look consistent. So, in addition of Hinter's hideous graphics, and, um, terrible controls, the gameplay is boring, you're spending hours flying in the sky and there was really nothing new they implemented except force motion controls so even watching the king's playthroughs, I mean it just looked boring when you would fight a mob you may roll and swing your sword or you spend hours traveling in the sky and hours going from one place to another so it looked very I guess you could say slow and boring and a t it looked like a tiresome adventure, not something that I would want to um, engage in. On the other hand, a game like Uncharted 2 or a game like Uncharted 2 is um, fast paced or a game like Donkey Kong Country is fast paced or even Aladdin for the SNES or Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Taikenshi. You're in combat, you're engaging in action, you um, feel like you're on an adventure. The game, Lord of the Rings, War of the Norse, you're that's fast paced as well. You're constantly fighting swarms of orcs. Battle for Mirrors 2 is fast paced. So, this is a slow paced game with very boring gameplay where you spend a lot of time traveling, flying, and the combat it just seems, I guess you could say, repetitive and um, relatively slow compared to other games where you're, um, I guess you could say, where's your character versus the world, like in Super Smash Bros. Melee, where you could attack extremely fast, just fast characters like Fox or Zelda, or, um, a game like, I'm trying to think of one game that I relatively liked that came out recently, a game like 
shadow run where most of your teammates may be dead, but you have to resurrect your teammates or you have to kill the other team before they kill you. And everybody's teleporting using enhanced speed, using their glider and getting around the battlefield extremely quickly. So the game it seems relatively slow. So let's talk about multiplayer. We have um no multiplayer in this game and we have no Wi Fi in this game. And um what saves this game? You also have puzzles to complete and the puzzles are um in my opinion, solving puzzles in the game is usually extremely boring. Now, why are they boring? Well, I only play a game that is action and adventure. I don't want to have to basically do a... I don't want the game to have to be like a rocket science project. I just want to relax and play the game. I mean, I'd rather, if I was going to do... If I was going to spend my time um, wanting to... If I was going to spend my time solving puzzles, I'd rather, I guess you could say, use that time towards doing work, something that could, um, I guess you could say, be more, um, educational, like, learning, rather than trying to solve a pixelated puzzle in a video game, or maybe writing a story. Or watching an educational video or even rather than doing puzzles I mean you may be